Okay, I think I'm streaming right now. It says five seconds. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, let me check the chat. Oh, there's Vedant already here. 20 minutes to go. Thank you for joining so early, Vedant. And uh, let me pop out the chat just a second. And uh, this is totally a new streaming connection for me. I'm using Hotspot that a friend of mine gave to me. So I really need to thank my friend because uh, my internet was not ready at all. And uh, so he saved my day giving, my, uh, giving his uh, uh, mobile phone to me so I can use the Hotspot. But uh, this is something quite new to me. So not really sure if I got all the settings right. Um, because here it says that the stream status is good. I trust you, uh, YouTube for that. So I hope you can clear my, uh, you can hear my voice clearly and you can see me clearly. You can see uh, the browser clearly. Uh, anyway, it is still uh, 12, uh, 29. So I'm going to wait just other uh, couple of minutes and uh, then we can start with the analysis uh, of the market and uh, then i'm going to talk just uh, uh, several minutes like let's say five minutes about uh, uh, something that uh, uh, has been asked uh, in the facebook group today and this is uh, the combination of uh, ichimoku and alm system and so i'm going to analyze something with that and um, then I'm going through the live chat. If you have any question, not just about uh, market analysis, of course, if you have any currency pair that you would like me to analyze, I'm very, very willing to do that. But uh, also if you have any other question uh, regarding, uh, well, not regarding anything, but regarding anything related to Forex trading, <laughs> and uh, you are very welcome to write that in the live chat. I see that there's Asif Mohammad here. Greetings from Canada. Hello to you, Asif. How are you? And um, uh, so many uh, traders I've seen uh, joining the Facebook group. Uh, oh, there's an ambulance passing. <laughs> Here I'm in Italy, so I already tell you that you will hear so many things. You will probably hear the dog barking. It's uh, a kind of uh, symbol here in uh, when I live stream in Italy. And um, I was saying so many traders joining the poll that uh, I launched on uh, Facebook. It was about uh, sharing the investor password so you can see all my trades on the MetaTrader. So I'm very, very glad about it. I think that the poll had uh, overall like 250 votes uh, with the first one that won that had almost 100 votes. And uh, it was the swing trading on the hourly chart that is probably what we are going to analyze today in this live trading session. And uh, so I think um, I'm going to start next week. Uh, I was about to start this week, to be honest, sharing the investor password. Um, and I have had some traders asking uh, for, for that. And I'm sorry that I was not able to do this for this week. Uh, the thing is that probably I'm going to share my account that uh, I've just created with uh, another broker, uh, but the account was not 100% ready. Uh, so I preferred to say, okay, I don't really want to do the things halfway. I want to wait for next week where when I can do the things 100% correctly, I can share my investor password. I can start trading with you. You can give me some feedback about my trades. If you like it, if you think that I made a mistake, if you wanted to have a different stop loss or take profit or entry point so it will be easier to discuss about my trades when I share my investor password because you have access to the MetaTrader and uh, so you can you can see my analysis you can see my positions so it will be easier to interact and to talk about our trades so Vincenzo is here hello to you Vincenzo how are you I've seen that you had Three amazing trades with the Alma 50, so very, very well done. I missed the one on Euro against the Japanese Yen because I didn't have that one on my Alma portfolio, so 
I'm very very happy for you because you're doing great and I'm very I'm, I'm quite sure that when I will launch my next course not the one regarding uh, the almond Ichimoku well of course even for that one but I'm pretty sure that when I will launch uh, the other one that is uh, the progression about the arm system you will be very very happy about it I have this feeling but we will see I, I'm planning to launch that at the end of April and um, let's see I don't want to spoil anything here and uh, okay so it is uh, 12 33 and uh, well in Italy it is uh, 1 33 actually and uh, uh, I think I can start uh, here with the market analysis so first of all I want to go through uh, the trades that uh, I was having for this week and uh, some other trades that I was analyzing so the first one that I had I think that this one is some is a trade that I didn't share in my YouTube videos but it is a trade that I took on Australia dollar Japanese yen and it didn't really go very well so I was uh I was following this up channel and you already know it because uh, we had uh, probably one week ago or a couple of weeks ago we had a very nice long position on it with a very good profit then I suggested to stop trading uh, around here because uh, we had this kind of resistance around here you can see a kind of short term resistance I'm going to draw it so you can see first touch here second one here third one here so I was not very very sure about trading with long positions anymore or at, at least if you wanted to trade with long positions not anymore with a rejection on this up channel but with a breakout of this resistance here that is exactly what happened we had this super strong breakout I'm going to delete this line and so another opportunity to have a long position then after that the price stopped here it retraced back very close to the up channel it went up again I was monitoring this uh, kind of short-term resistance that we had uh, here let me zoom in a bit and uh, so we have this short-term resistance I was talking about so I was waiting for breakouts of that and uh, with this uh, with this candle we had a breakout I had my position here and uh, the candle was going up very very fast so I was having a very good position but then it retraced it reached my entry point once again it went up for a while like five six hours but then it retraced all the way back and hit my stop loss here so this was a trade that was not so good for this week and um, now I can cancel this trade that I had the first loss that I had for this week and the price just went back it is stopping once again on this uh, lower part of the up channel not a clear situation to me here because okay if it stops here we have a reaction by buyers we still have a higher lows uh, on the market so still a good opportunity opportunity to trade with a long position I'm pretty sure that if we add the moving averages we still have a bullish setup and yes we do okay we still have a bullish setup but it seems once again that the power of buyers is slowing down with lower highs right now on the market so this is not a clear situation as we had before so probably I'm not really going to trade this one again despite having a clear setup with the moving averages and despite having a, um, a very clear chart pattern here because we are still in this very important chart pattern it is a chart pattern that started on the 25th of March so it is almost one month that we are having opportunities following this chart pattern this means that if not here because this was just a second touch at least we had another opportunity here another one here another one here another one here so so many opportunities on this currency pair and probably I didn't trade it at the best because uh, I had uh, one good position here one bad position here I think I could do much better than this with this currency pair but very well done if you did better <laughs> and uh, Australian dollar against Swiss franc this is a very easy trade uh, I mean not easy because nothing is easy but it really went very very uh, smoothly because we had a bullish engulfing pattern here we with a very clear setup of the moving averages that was uh, bullish and it is still bullish so I traded with this uh, bullish engulfing pattern and you can see that the price just went straight up without uh, any kind of uh, retracement it hits my take profit here it had a very minor retracement and 
and then it went up once again. So very, very clear trade with a risk to reward ratio that is 1 to 2.25. So only with this trade uh, and uh, comparing this one with the previous one, I'm losing one because it is my risk. Then I'm winning 2.25. So I'm still up by 1.25. There are some people that calculate uh, their uh, profits in uh, risk to reward ratio. They call it a P factor or sometimes even K factor. So uh, it's uh, I'm up by 1.25. This means that if I'm risking 1% of my account this week, only with these two trades that we have just analyzed with a loss and a win, I have a plus 1.25%. So very good. And uh, this is the benefit, of course, of trading with a good risk to reward ratio. And a euro against New Zealand dollar. I had a very lucky trade here because I had a first trade with a, a uh, well, I had a, a trade with a short position, but not really on euro against New Zealand dollar. I had pound against New Zealand dollar, but um, it is almost the same. We we had almost the same movement going down, and then on the news we had the the uh, currency pair going up. So I had a, a first profit of just 20 pips, not that much, because I removed my uh, my um, uh, trade before the news. Uh, regarding the CPI for uh, the New Zealand dollar, the consumer purchase index, um, and we had this super good up movement, but I didn't trade it. And uh, then the price went back and uh, it started to go down here. It started to give the uh, feeling to go up again here. So I took a long position because this is something that uh, probably can be explained with something called Darvax box, but uh, uh, is something that I don't usually use and actually I didn't really want I didn't really want to use the Darvax box but probably this is the main definition of this uh, pattern here uh, but uh, uh, we have a range after super strong up movement so we're supposed to have a consolidation phase we have the price ranging between he, between this uh, high here and this low here so usually traders who, who use the Darvax box just wait for a breakout of this uptrend uh, this uh, uh, resistance or this support here. I was trading within this range here and of course with long positions because we have the setup of the moving averages that is bullish so I want to open a long positions and I wanted to open my long position on this candle here but when I went to check a possible position on it I had a very very bad risk to reward ratio so I said okay I'm going to enter this trade only if we have a very small retracement so I got this price at 167.90 and I got at least a risk to reward ratio that was 1 to 1.67 not the best risk to reward ratio that we usually have on the market but still good for this kind of position so I took this trade and it went very well very nice uh, take profit here very close to uh, where the price went just like a couple of pips below it so very nice position here another very good position and right now I'm not just considering well I also had that kind of uh, of area let me see if I can take it back okay I had this kind of area let me explain also this area that I had on the market this is an area where I already uh, wanted to study if the price was about to stop around this area and then it stopped here just just a bit below this area that I was considering here because it was last important area that we had on the market with two or three highs that we had here before the price going down again so I already wanted to study this area if it could happen something to the price here and it seems that it's working once again here with this hammer and the price that is going up again so this is a very important area I'm going to delete it because I already have this low here that is very very close so I don't need to have them both um, let me check the chat before going uh, uh, on um, so uh, Vincenzo said I can't wait okay and Navir is here hello to you has anyone heard of Forex Mentor Pro um, no not me uh, sorry about that <laughs> and uh, Vedan says uh, nope okay so let's go on <laughs> um, then okay so this was my analysis and my trade on euro against New Zealand dollar then the euro against Japanese yen as I said I was looking for a long position 
position only on the breakout of this level so I suggest you to have a stop entry order here uh, where you can see this rectangle here but the price you can see didn't have uh, the strength to break this resistance here and it went back instead so we had no position at all on the market but unfortunately I had a position on the euro on the US dollar against the Japanese yen because I was monitoring this kind of a down channel here and when we had this candle going higher breaking this down channel I really thought this was a very very good sign of strength by buyers so I took my position here probably worst price ever because the price just went a bit higher than that and then it started to go back and it never went higher than my entry price just slightly here but then it went back all the way back now I still have this position on the market probably this uh, down channel doesn't make sense anymore I still have this position and I'm very very glad that I uh, had a super good stop loss right below this short term support that I was analyzing in the previous video because you can see that the price went back it went about two pips from my stop loss and then it's going up again of course it's still in a red area so I'm having a loss for this trade but this reaction by buyers proves that my stop loss was very very accurate here at 111.75 so uh, I say to myself very well done for the stop loss that I have placed then of course I can still lose this trade because now the price is going down it's not very far from the stop loss that I have here but this reaction by buyers proves that my analysis was at least correct for the stop loss because uh, we had a reaction on this level here so it made sense to place the stop loss right below this level here and uh, we had some uh, trades uh, with the Ichimoku uh, not too many actually just one uh, this one it didn't it didn't really count because I was just analyzing this but before the news then we had this super strong movement so I didn't have any position before I'm not having any position now and then a euro against Swiss, Swiss franc uh, this is the one that I suggested to trade with long positions because we have a wonderful uptrend here so I took my long position after this congestion phase the price broke this congestion phase it went higher so I placed my trade like this and uh, I didn't want to place my stop loss like usually we do with the Ichimoku trading so below the cloud because the price was quite far from the clouds and so I had to study a different stop loss and I think that it made sense to place the stop loss right below this congestion phase that I was studying so with this short term support here placing the stop loss right below this short term support this congestion phase so I placed this here and I placed Placed my uh, my take profit at 114.12. So just analyzing uh, previous up movements, but uh, it was not very uh, very uh, easy to analyze previous up movements because uh, we don't really have any retracement to study. We could study a re uh, a kind of congestion phase here and then calculate the movement from the congestion phase here or the movement from a possible breakout of the congestion phase. So this movement uh, here that is about uh, 50 pips more or less if we analyze 50 pips from the congestion phase it's going to be something around 114 um, even 30 maybe so probably another take profit that made sense was 114.20 and it probably was even better because the price you can see that exactly stops around 114.20 it just goes like three pips higher than that and then it goes all the way down but I decided to settle for 114.12 because I already had a very good risk to reward ratio better than two, than one to two uh, so one to two point twelve that is something very good if you are trading with the Ichimoku so especially if you're trading rejections this is something very very good so I didn't really want to exaggerate going even higher than that I settled for one to two point twelve and the last one was a euro against Australian dollar and I was analyzing this on the four hour chart but didn't really have any opportunity if you remember when I analyzed this last time I said I'm waiting for either a breakout of the cloud for a long position or a breakout of this support here for a short position we didn't really have anything here the price is still ranging um, between this cloud and this support so I didn't have 
any opportunity to open a trade and I think I'm not going to do that because now if I analyze the situation with the Ichimoku especially if I just take the blue line here you can see here is going up then it's going down again for a while here is going up just slightly again then it's going down again here so not a clear situation to me so I will just leave this one and I will not trade it anymore and let me have a quick look at the charts before going on and um uh, hi Federico, uh, will it be possible to include the US dollar uh, czar? So uh, South Africa, I think. Uh, okay, US dollar czar. Okay. Um, let me see if there's the Oanda one. Okay, this one. So South African rent. Um, and let me have a clear chart then we we can add all the indicators that we want i'm not really sure if you want like a plain analysis or analysis with swing trading or ichimoku we can have both of them <laughs> and um so us dollar okay your live reviews of course um jama delits or Jamadelic, I'm not really sure. Sorry, my pronunciations of the names uh, is, is very, very bad. And uh, Laverna is here, Laverna595, and she has some dubs, I see, from the emoticons that she's using. Okay, um, so I'm going to uh, reply to all the requests that we have in the chat, but uh, if we don't have any requests, I'm just going normally with the market analysis. As I said before, we also have to spend a couple of words regarding uh, the ALM system combined with the uh, Ichimoku setup and uh, so if we have requests in the chat I'm going through them otherwise I'm just following my own analysis um, so uh, let's uh, Let's analyze the US dollar against the South African rand. Okay, um, this is something that uh, I've just seen a couple of times, but just because I used to play with an app on my mobile phone uh, with, of course, uh, a demo account, not with real money. And that was this one. And I remember that for some periods, it was like a very, very volatile currency pair. And it was quite funny to trade on the app, but it is something that, uh, uh, I don't really trade with my live account, so it is something completely new to me. Um, so uh, I'm going through uh, the hourly chart and I'm going to analyze this first with the normal trend analysis with the swing trading technique. And if you have any other requests, like I don't know, if you want to, to trade in longer periods, so you want the analysis of the daily chart or 15 minutes if you want to trade in a short term period, just let me know in the chat. Uh, so, okay, of course, even without the setup of the moving averages, I will say that here we are in a very strong downtrend, at least a minor downtrend, because I see that this super big down movement starts at the end of March, so it's a movement that covers about three weeks. So. It can't really be considered a main movement. So I just want to check very quickly what happens on the daily chart. Well, on the daily chart, uh, we have a kind of up movement from the beginning of 2018 till almost the end of 2018. It covers a period of like seven months, more or less. So very strong up movement here. But now it seems that the price is just retracing or just following another trend that is for sure not an uptrend, of course. Uh, the setup of the moving averages here can't really help us. Of course, right now we have a very slight um, bullish setup with green, orange, and red but I wouldn't really trust this setup because we have the moving averages that are very close to each other and uh, they're probably considering a part of this period here combined with this period here so I think that uh, it doesn't really make sense here to analyze this kind of trend with the setup of the moving averages so I'm just going to close it for a second so on the daily I see that recently the price is going down there has been if we check only this part like this okay like this we will say that we are in a clear downtrend because we have lower highs on the market we have lower lows like here 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 the new one here so we will say that we are in a downtrend here starting from september 2018 till the beginning of this year so till the end of january 2019 but 
If we add the last part that we have here, we have a very good reaction by buyers with an attempt to form a new high on the market higher than the previous one. But uh, it's not really a, a higher high here because if we check this these two highs here they're very very close to this one so i consider this three almost at the same price and here we also have very very good shooting star that uh, uh, initiates a new down movement here so i will say that this around less let me have a round number so 14.70 okay here i will say that 14.70 is a first price to consider for a short position then let me see if we have other important levels on the daily um i see that here we had a reaction here we had another reaction here the price stops for a while so let me have a round number even here like 88 and okay so on the daily i just want to consider this two prices okay and uh, right now let me zoom out a bit like this right now we are very close to a buying area so uh, right here i will say that we might have a rejection opportunity and even if we analyze the hourly chart we can see that uh, let me have a rectangle here we can see that the price is in a kind of range and uh, even on the hourly chart we confirm that this price at the bottom here around 13.88 is a very nice uh, price to try to have a long position waiting for a rejection of the price so uh, buying area i will say that is around 13.88 of course you don't exactly have to buy uh, blindly at 13.88. You can wait for a reaction of buyers and see if you have a, uh, a beginning of an upper movement, then you can join the market uh, with buyers already there. But uh, if the price is just going straight to 13.88, to, uh, you can still try with a buy position because probably at 13.88 you will have very good risk to reward ratio if you just place the stop loss right below this support here and take profit around here. So you can still try that but I honestly prefer to wait for a confirmation of buyers on the market so studying the candlesticks. So a first uh, buying area is at 13.88. Uh, not very uh, sure about the selling areas. Uh, of course, we have a first one here because we have a congestion phase. So this is a sideways trend and uh, we normally uh, trade the sideways trend with buying positions at the bottom, selling positions at the top. So right now, I will say that since we also have a, a setup with the moving averages that is slightly bearish, I will say that right now these two candles confirm that this might be a good price to sell and so even right now you might consider to open a short position on the market so something like this a short position at the market price with very easy stop loss just above this level here uh, so let's say entry price 14.07 with a stop loss at 14.13 and uh, take profit let's say at the bottom of it so 13.92 should be okay let's check a position like this so a position Position like this has a risk to reward ratio that is 1 to 2.5 so still a very very good risk to reward ratio for this kind of position so I will say that right now if you want to trade this one I would personally trade it with a short position trading the range that we are having right now with a very good risk to reward ratio so you can't really ask for more uh, <laughs> from this position if the price reaches the bottom of the channel you can still try with buy position but um, honestly uh, I prefer short positions here first for the setup and the second because we are coming from a short term downtrend so probably it is better to have short positions anyway you have two areas to enter here with short positions at the bottom with buying positions I prefer once again I say short positions but you know better than me what to do so it's your call it's not my call um and uh, hey Federico, how are you? Nice to see you again on live. Hi Onker, I remember you very well. My question is, can we consider the gaps as potential support and resistance while trading stocks? Uh, 
Uh, okay, so this is stock trading. And uh, Gaspari just joined and says, very good, Federico. Hi, Gaspari. Thank you very, very much for joining. And uh, let me reply to the question regarding uh, um, support and resistance on the stock market. So let me open one of my usually stocks. Uh, for example, I was trading uh, Apple recently and uh, uh, you know that I was trading Apple because I have published this investment uh, at the beginning of January um, and uh, I think that um, I, I'm not really sure what kind of time frame you prefer uh, to uh, you prefer me to answer this question. I think that the hourly is still okay, I think, uh, because even on the hourly we can clearly see the gaps that we have uh, between the two days. Uh, and um, okay, so the question is, can we consider support and resist uh, the gaps also to consider support and resistance? I will consider the gaps in the stock market as a normal candle. So for example, let me do something like this. Um, I don't remember where it is. I think it is here. And uh, then here we have price range. Okay, this is what I wanted to do. So here we have the closing session uh, for uh, for the stock market here. Then we have the opening session the, the next day here uh, with this candle. So from here where this candle closes to here, we have this gap. And of course, if you consider the stock market, you have many gaps because it closes in the afternoon and it reopens the next Next day in the morning so meanwhile of course the the stock market is still moving but you can't really trade so you have many uh, gaps in the stock market it's not like the forex trading that you usually see gaps only during the weekend so what to do here I will consider this gap from here to here uh, let me zoom in so it will be a bit clearly as a kind of normal candlestick consider this candlestick like hourly candlestick and then the gap between here and here like a, a candlestick that is formed during the, the period where when the market is closed so I will consider this gap just as a normal candlestick to be honest as I suggested even in the forex market to consider the weekly gap just as a normal candlestick that you have on the market just consider that as a weekend candlestick in the forex market here you need to consider kind of daily uh, candlestick because here you have gaps every single day uh, in the stock market so yes I think that uh, you can consider uh, the gaps as normal candlesticks and so you can count them uh, when you analyze uh, key levels on the market of course I will uh, I will do the same of course and uh, I honestly when I analyze the stock market because I also have some trades in the stock market I consider gaps as normal candlesticks so uh, of course you can't really avoid to uh, consider them because they are a very important part of stock trading so uh, of course you need to take into account that gaps are a huge part of stock trading so uh, my answer is, is yes I would consider them and uh, another thing I'm not really sure if I already uh, told uh, um, this in a live session or anyway in a public session I think I told this in a private chat uh, but another thing is that when you trade the stock market uh, one thing that you can do to consider the gaps is to adjust the moving averages so usually you if you click on the settings of the moving averages and you go to inputs you have that here on source the moving averages are usually applied to the close the closing price but uh, if you want to consider the gaps in the stock market Probably it is better if you apply the moving averages to the open price. So you can see that it doesn't really change anything uh, here, but uh, it is just slightly more accurate, in my opinion, uh, to consider the opening price because uh, in that case, you also consider the gaps that you have in the stock market. So this uh, was just to answer the question about so stock trading. Let me go back to Forex and uh, let's check the charts. Uh, mm, thank you, Federico. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, okay, so before um, before talking about uh, Ichimoku and uh, ARM system, 
think that uh, I'm just going to complete my analysis of the market uh, so we will not uh, have uh, any any gap I want to use the same term any gap between the two analysis I want to continue with my swing trading analysis then we can talk all the time we want about Alm and uh, Ichimoku uh, combined all together so starting from a pound against Australian dollar that is one that I was analyzing you can see here that I was already checking some uh, ranges to uh, calculate my positions of course uh, here on a pound against Australian dollar I'm considering short positions we have a very very clear uh, bearish setup with the moving averages uh, even without the moving averages of course if you just check the price like this of course you don't really need the indicators to tell you that we are in a downtrend here because you can clearly see that the price is going down forming uh, lower highs and lower lows so uh, this is just a plus consider this a plus on the market uh, it is uh, quite useful when we don't really have a clear situation on the market but here the situation is very clear even without the moving averages so I believe that we would look for short positions even without the setup of the moving averages so I was considering this currency pair for a short position because we have a very good uh, uh, level here where buyers reacted pushing the price higher than we had a very strong reaction by sellers then we have a retracement a very short retracement uh, here that goes once again around this level the price goes down another retracement around that level so I'm just studying this potential level here and uh, I think that this might be a very good level where sellers can uh, again step into the market with short positions so I was studying this candlestick because at the beginning uh, during this session uh, it was uh, a, a very uh, tempting opportunity to open a short position because the price was going down very very fast but uh, then I waited for the end of the session and uh, it turned out to be a hammer that is uh, probably uh, the, the last thing that I wanted to see for a potential short position that I wanted to have on the market so I'm still considering this one because this hammer is really something I didn't really want to see for a short position and after this we didn't have any clear action on the market you can see very small candles going slightly down here going slightly up uh, so not a very clear action on the market so I'm still uh, considering a short position but so far didn't have any uh, any clear hint to enter my short position so I'm still waiting on this currency pair and uh, um, let me uh, check the chat just for a sec. <laughs> okay, uh, Forex Boy X says thanks, Federico. I appreciate what you do. Thank you very much. And Onker says thank you for information. It's a pleasure, Onker. I really uh, enjoyed to uh, spend a couple of words about stocks. We always talk about forex. I really love <laughs> uh, analyzing forex markets, but I also love to uh, spend a couple of words on other financial markets. I read a lot. I research a lot so I'm glad when I have the opportunity to talk to someone about things that I study and um, pound against New Zealand dollar um, I don't really want to analyze this I'm going to analyze this in another video that I am preparing for the weekend it will be an educational video but don't really want to analyze this here because uh, of course we had the CPI for the New Zealand dollar that uh, had this super strong movement so uh, of course I'm not uh, going to uh, analyze this right after the super strong moments because all the indicators are not telling the truth after uh, such a candlestick so uh, I think that this is not the right time to trade with pound against New Zealand dollar uh, of course you can still trade with it so probably you can just remove the indicators because at this point they're not very useful uh, you can trade something here if you want but still I don't really see any clear opportunity probably we can analyze a very early formation of an up channel here so something like this but uh, very very early stage so not really sure I'm going to consider something like that it's not even like an exact up channel it's probably more like a rising wedge so uh, I should probably do something like this um, so this and uh, 
probably with this high okay this two highs that we have so probably it's more like a rising wedge not exactly a uh, an up channel but even with this rising wedge i don't really see any clear opportunity to trade right now uh, so i'm just going on with australian dollar canadian dollar that is a currency pair that uh, um, is uh, is having a, a very uh, good bullish moment so here you can see that the price is going up recently is in a kind of congestion phase once again and so you can see this clearly I want to go back just a second okay like this you can see this clearly from the 15th of April so pretty much from the beginning of this week the price didn't really go anywhere just bouncing up and down and uh, within this this range and uh, also it's not a very uh, big range if we calculate the size of it is uh, it's about less than 50 pips so not so many opportunities during this uh, within this range and of course if you want to trade this uh, you already know what kind of positions i prefer if you want to trade this range uh, do I really need to tell you what kind of positions I prefer? I ask, I ask you in the chat. Do I prefer to have a, a long position here at the bottom or a short position here at the top? I ask you in the chat, so I don't say uh, the same things over and over again. Uh, you can uh, reply, you can answer this question for me. Uh, meanwhile, I go on. I repeat the answer, the the question, just one more time. So here in this range, if I have to choose between short positions at the top and buy position at the bottom, which one do you think I prefer? This is the question. So uh, let me check the chat. Okay, still no answers. Uh, and uh, I'm going on, but uh, I really expect you to have an answer for this. Uh, so I I know for sure that I'm not just talking about my positions, but I'm also giving you something. So uh, I'm also sharing a kind of knowledge with you so you can analyze the market on your own because it's not fair that I just share my positions and you copy. I hope that you can just analyze the market and have your own positions. It would be much better. So that's why I ask this question to you. And if I see the wrong answer, I will not talk to you anymore. <laughs> um, Forex boy X says long and uh, Asif says buy go long. <laughs> Very enthusiastic about the answer about going long. And Samia says long. Okay, thank you very much you made me happy of course i prefer long positions here because we have a clear setup that is bullish we are coming from a clear uptrend short term uptrend so of course i prefer long positions here and uh, we already had a kind of opportunity here uh, with a hammer right on um, well actually two hammers that we have here right at the bottom of this range i don't consider this and this because we were at the beginning of this range but probably here we had an opportunity to trade and uh, have our take profits uh, here before the pricing going back down like this um, probably not really here because even if we want to consider this as a bullish engulfing pattern probably we wouldn't really have a very good risk to reward ratio because with a long position after the bullish engulfing pattern we want to place of course the stop loss below this range here possibly even below this uh, uh, this lows that are there so something around 95.51 and uh, the take profit at the top of it so something 0.9607 for example risk to reward ratio it's just one to one if we take the price here so not very convenient and uh, so i don't really consider this as a clear opportunity of course of course you can trade with a risk to reward ratio one to one it's still good if you have a clear opportunity like this but uh, i tend to look for opportunities that uh, uh, give me a risk to reward ratio that is usually better than one to one so i'm just going on and i'm not really trading this one at the moment new zealand dollar japanese Again, here uh, we don't really have a clear setup we are about to have a uh, a bearish setup but once again 
I don't really feel like trading the New Zealand dollar in this period because there is this candle that um, a bit falsifies all the indicators that we have. Uh, even if we add the Ichimoku, you can tell, even if you are not a fan of the Ichimoku and even if you haven't studied the Ichimoku, you can tell that there is something strange here in the Ichimoku. Look at the, at the cloud here. It looks like a normal line going down. It doesn't look like a cloud that has a body inside it so, so you can tell that when we have um, candles like this that are not ordinary candles indicators tend to have a very weird behavior so I don't feel like analyzing the New Zealand dollar right now with indicators like the moving averages and the Ichimoku so I'm just going on and switch to Swiss franc Japanese yen the Swiss franc has uh, has been probably the most interesting currency that we had for the past two weeks very very weak we had an amazing trade on euro against a uh, swiss franc but even here you can see clear a downtrend for a uh, swiss franc against japanese yen and then uh, here you can see that on the 10th of april we had the super up movement here so it is about 140 pips and of course the same kind of down movement here 140 pips so price went up all the way up price went all the way down here uh, we can consider this a kind of support at the bottom here uh, let's check if in the past we had other levels uh, around here probably just went a bit below that um, maybe uh, here once again with uh, the price that worked as a resistance okay it is a level it's not probably a super strong level but it is a level that we want to consider and um, you can see that even if we have a super strong down movement the the setup of the moving averages is still not clear here because of course we are also coming from a very uh, strong up movement and also I have to say that this seems fair to me and I wouldn't really jump straight away with a short position and I think that this is a kind of signal that can really um, let you avoid a bad trade because if we consider this up movement it happened, um, let me check date range um, I'm trying to use uh, trading view in a professional way so this up movement happened in 44 bars we are in an hourly chart so more or less a bit less than two days and uh, let me use this again to check the down movement that we had here this down movement happened in 97 bars so uh, a Oh, well, it is written here is six days. <laughs> okay, so in six days. So I think that this up movement was even stronger than the down movement that we have right now. So this, in my opinion, is not a clear opportunity to open a short position. Of course, if you were trying to catch a short term trend, probably with the Ichimoku, you would have had the trade of your life. You can see that it goes down. It happened. We have a breakout very clear breakout here so this was a very easy position with the Ichimoku very very easy with a nice profit with a short position but if we try to determine the long-term trends and so we use the swing trading setup using the moving averages and also key levels I will say that this is just a down movement, it is not a clear downtrend and even if we zoom out probably you can check that out. This is a movement that we already had other times like here, like here, but overall if we zoom out we don't really have a clear trend on the market. Actually it seems more than we have a kind of congestion phase here in the long period with the price just going up and down in this range. So. Uh, here is a kind of situation where the setup of moving averages can really save your life because here you expect oh my god this is such a strong down movement I have to join with a short position because it is clear that we have a downtrend here but here the setup of the moving averages is saving you because it's telling you Look, this is a very strong down movement, but it is not a downtrend. We don't really have a downtrend here. And you can see this from the setup of the moving averages. And of course, you can also see it if you zoom out and check what happened before. 
So I'm I'm glad that we analyzed this currency pair because uh, this is one of those situations where you can really save some money if you completely understand how to use the strategy that you have. So here with the swing trading setup, I immediately recognized that there was something wrong. Super strong down movement, setup of the moving averages that is not bearish. There must be something uh, that I'm missing when I zoom out. And now when I zoom out, it's clearer the situation. Okay, so let me have a look at the chat. Hello Federico, unfortunately joined uh, the live video a bit late. I would love to hear your view on US dollars with Frank as it's hitting resistance level. Thank you so much. Hello Sadik and welcome here in the live chat, in the live streaming session. And uh, of course we can analyze the US dollars with Frank. It is a currency pair that we haven't analyzed yet. So I'm just glad to jump on it and see what happens. As I said, the Swiss franc has been quite weak for the past week, uh, so we uh, of course have a very strong up movement on the US dollar against the Swiss franc here. And uh, okay, I can cancel all these levels here. I was analyzing this ascending triangle here, um, but I can cancel all of this. And now uh, it is hitting a major resistance. I think that you are referring to these two highs here on the market. So I'm pretty sure that if I draw this line, we have the price here and of course we have the price here let me go back just a bit to see if this price also worked in the past oh it worked even here that's a very very big resistance that we have on the market let me go just slightly back um, okay, the price is quite far from it right now. So yes, this worked here in the past, then it worked here with a double top and then the price is here again. I can't really say that it is working here once again because we don't really have any reaction by sellers right now on the market. It just seems that buyers are very, very strong and pushing the price higher. And uh, right now we have uh, also a clear bullish setup with the moving averages. So, so if your question is the price is approaching a very, very strong resistance. So if your question is, can I open a short position on it? I would say no, to be honest, <laughs> I wouldn't open any short position here because it is true that this level proved to be a very good level in the past for sellers to open their short positions. But we need to consider that the current situation on the market is this and it is in favor of buyers. And even in the very, very short term in the past six candles, buyers proved to be very, very strong. So I don't agree with with short positions here. But of course, we have a double option here. For example, you can also set two kind of orders here. Um, if you want to trade with a short position, let me let me first analyze the the one that I will take with the swing trading setup. The the position that I've analyzed with the swing trading setup, of course, is a buy position. So we have a major resistance here. I don't want to have a buy position right now on the market with the price facing a major resistance, but I will place my buy entry order, my stop entry order above this resistance here. So like uh, about, let's say even 10 pips from this resistance. So the resistance is around here. I will place it uh, around so 101.30, 101.35 or something like that. So here I will place my buy order if the price is able to break this resistance here. Now, of course you can say, well, but what if I want to trade on a possible rejection that we may have on the resistance? I also want to have the opportunity to enter a, a short position if the price is going back, especially if it is forming a new low that is lower than this one. At this point, if you think that this resistance is really stopping this uptrend, at this point, you are looking for a formation of a new trend on the market. So it makes more sense to uh, analyze a a possible short position with the Ichimoku. So you will have a better idea of the entry point and stop loss and take profit that you can place if you want to try to catch a new trend on a rejection of this resistance here. 
So as I said, I was expecting that if you want to trade with a short position, you need to wait for a, a movement of the price that goes below this low here. It makes sense not only with the Ichimoku to, uh, to wait for a retracement of the price that breaks the clouds, but it also makes sense with the swing trading technique because you want the price to go below this low here before confirming that sellers are really into the market because if you have just a very small movement let's say here and then the price is going up again you didn't prove anything you just proved that the price had a small retracement on the market and is going up again but if you have a very good retracement with the price going below this swing low here you prove that sellers are very strong on the market right now and are able to form a new low on the market lower than this one so first level that you need to wait for a possible short position is below that swing low so let me color this one in a kind of red like this so first level for a short position is here but here if you want to uh, trade with the Ichimoku is even not enough because uh, you are only on the first level of the cloud you may also have a rejection on it so I will say that it makes sense to place a sell order around this area here so you need to wait for a very strong proof by sellers that they are really able to push the price down and change this uptrend and in my opinion it makes sense to wait for this kind of proof you may think that it is too much you may think because right now the price is at 101.17 and this area here is at 1.0065 more or less so we are talking of a down movement of 50 pips and you might say i don't really want to miss a down movement of 50 pips i want to join all the movements but i think it makes sense to wait for this kind of confirmation with the price here because we have had a super super strong up movement even if we want to consider only the up movement from here to here we are talking about an up movement of 125 pips so of course it's not enough to have a movement of like 15 20 pips it doesn't prove anything it doesn't prove that sellers are strong enough to change the trend they is it's just proving that we have a normal retracement on the market if you want to prove that sellers are strong enough to change this trend you need to look for short positions around here and also i want to uh, spend a couple of words about something that i have seen so many times in the udemy course and even in the facebook group the question is if I want to trade with both I want to analyze the market with both the swing trading setup and the Ichimoku trading do I need to uh, do I need to give more importance to one of them or can I trade with both because I find out that many times when I want to trade the breakout of the cloud the setup of the moving averages is not in favor of my position like here for example we are uh, analyzing a possible short position here with the breakout of the cloud but if we check the setup of the moving averages we have a bullish setup with the moving averages so we don't really want to have short positions well actually this makes sense in my opinion because if we analyze it here we have a bullish setup so we are looking for long positions and we have already talked about this level for a possible long position and if we analyze with the Ichimoku okay I clicked on the wrong button if we analyze with the Ichimoku right now the price is still above the cloud we have the the blue line that is heading up we have the color of the cloud that is green price and red line above Above the blue line and Chico span that is above the price and going higher so we have all the parameters of the Ichimoku in favor of a long position so right now Ichimoku and swing trading setup are saying exactly the same thing now of course if you want to trade with the breakout of the cloud the logic of the blade the breakout of the cloud in the Ichimoku trading is that you want to try to catch a new trend so you already know that the trend is up but you still want to trade to try to catch a new trend so of course when you have have a position with the breakout of the cloud you can't expect that the trade that the trend 
end with the setup of the moving averages is in your favor because you are trading against the trend you are trying to catch a new trend on the market so of course you are going against the setup of the moving averages but what if you wait for the breakout of the cloud and you enter your short positions here is it really against the swing trading technique it's not really against the swing trading technique because if the price goes all the way down here, you don't really want to have a long position on the market with the swing trading setup because not only is forming a lower low on the market at the price, so it's a sign that sellers are on the market and you don't want to have a long position. You probably want to stay out of the market with the swing trading technique. But with the price here, the price is even going below this other swing low that is here and this congestion phase here. So you totally want to stay out of the market with the swing trading technique. So I don't think that they are in contrast all the time. Actually, I think that they are in contrast like 1% of the time on the market. But one thing that I really wanted to uh, highlight is that with the setup, with the Ichimoku trading, when you trade the breakout, you are going against the trend that we had before and you are trying to catch a new trend. So, of course, you can't expect to have also the setup of the moving averages in favor of your position. And uh, OK, that's pretty much it, so the, what I wanted to say. And so that's pretty much it for my analysis regarding US dollar against Swiss franc. So buying area around here with the breakout of this level, if you want to plan a short position, I would use the Ichimoku for that with the breakouts, not only of this level here, but also of the cloud here and this congestion phase. That's it. Let me check the, the chat. <laughs> um, pound against US dollar downward breakout. So I'm going to analyze this in a second. Thanks for your analysis, Federico. I actually would like to wait until price goes below 1.0063. So I think that our analysis was kind of same, kind of similar. So we have the same view uh, uh, regarding short positions. So it makes sense if you really want to have a short position to wait for this area here and uh, for confirmation to open a short position. Yes, that's exactly what I uh, also was saying uh, with my analysis. So we have kind of same view on this currency pair. Mm, let me go to pound against the US dollar. That is a request from Forex boy. And uh, he says uh, mm, downward breakout. Uh, let's go for it. And uh, well, let me remove the Ichimoku. And I, I see that I already have a level here <laughs> that I'm analyzing. OK, so yes, uh, the price is very, very close to an important level is actually on this level right now here. We are coming from a very strong um, bearish uh, moment here with the price going down very fast. We have the setup of the moving averages that is uh, bearish. So here everything is in favor of a short position. Now I also um, have this level here. Uh, let me check. Um, okay, I have that level here because of this. Might be not a very important level, but I still want to have it on the market. So the logic of the message that I have uh, seen in the chat by Forex Boy is um, we might have a breakout of this level here with a continuation of this downtrend of this minor downtrend that we have on the market. And uh, actually it makes sense. Uh, I really like short positions here with a breakout of this level. And um, I also see that it is 1.30, so I think that we might also have some news. Uh, yes, we just had free news here um, in favor of the US dollar. So probably this is a good uh, a time to enter a short position here with a breakout of this level. Let's see the reaction live on the market. Um, seems not super strong. Let me check. Uh, uh, we also have the Canadian dollar that probably has a bigger movement than this. Let me just switch a second to pound against Canadian dollar. 
Um, okay, bigger volatility, but not clear direction on the market. Uh, so nothing special even here on pound Canadian dollar, at least for the first minutes of the news. Bigger volatility compared to pound against the US dollar, but uh, here at least we have a clear direction. The price is clearly going down. Here on pound against Canadian dollar, um, we have volatility, but not with a clear di direction. So. Let me go back to pound against the US dollar and check the reaction live on the market. Um, I might also open a position right here. Hmm. Let me see. I'm just thinking about it because uh, this might be also a good opportunity to open a short position because it's very, very easy. Even if I don't want to go below this level, it's quite easy to place a short position like this here, like right now below this level. So at the market price above this uh, uh, higher uh, um, this uh, upper shadow here uh, and uh, with the take profit at the bottom here with a risk to reward ratio one to seven. But I think we can do better than this with a stop loss here and to take profit to 65 like this. So one um, to 1.89 is still good in my opinion, but the stop loss needs to be a bit higher than this. Uh, probably I missed a very good entry point around here, uh, something like 130.02. Uh, 130.22 for the stop loss, so 129.65 maybe for the take profit. Uh, okay, probably this is this was the right uh, the right uh, trade to have with a short position breakout of this level. We also have a couple of news in favor uh, to trade this one, so probably this is uh, what. Um, this is the the right position to have on the market i see that the, the price is retracing um if you don't mind let me open just a second i have my meta trader here uh, let me open just a second my order because this is a very clear opportunity in my opinion uh so 0 0.75 okay uh let me check 130.22, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Got it. <laughs> um, sorry about that. It's not very professional, but I didn't really want to miss the opportunity to trade this one. So still don't have the trade on the market because I really want to try to catch the price at 130.02. Uh, so uh, I have a limit entry order right now, but um, a bit sad because this was a very good opportunity to trade. Uh, but uh, still, uh, I think that the price has a very good chance to retrace just a bit to my limit entry order and uh, then we will see if it will continue to go down or not so yes very good call uh, forex boy this was a very nice opportunity with the breakout of this uh, uh, of this uh, support and um uh, actually, the price, I think that has the potential if it continues to go down, I think it has the potential also to break this level here. And uh, after that, I don't think we have any major support on the market. So potentially we can really see pound the US dollar going down even further than that. Uh, so I see that the price is retracing, hitting my uh, limit entry order here. So I'm very, very happy about it. So I have my trade on the market. And uh, I was saying that potentially if we also have breakout of this level, we don't really have any other major support. So it can we can really see pound against US dollar reaching if we have breakout of this level reaching 1.29 even uh, during the next week and uh, we will see if this happens of course and um, okay so this was pound against the US dollar um, <laughs> you can blame me if uh, it goes up. Yes, I will blame you if it goes up. So you are responsible for my trade. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Of course, uh, everyone is responsible for their own trades. So um, it's not because you wrote a pound against the US dollar downward breakout. Uh, uh, as you could see, I already had my levels uh, here, but uh, of course I was uh, uh, talking with you in the live streaming. So I was not really paying attention 
attention to trades during this one or two hours that we are together but I'm very very glad that uh, you opened my eyes so I could just quickly go to my MetaTrader and open this trade even if I'm live streaming here and uh, so I didn't miss the opportunity to trade even if I'm live streaming I can do both of them if you don't mind and uh, I was thinking we broke downward from a wedge yesterday um, let me see you okay so you were talking about a wedge so I think that kind of wedge might be this one um, so we have something like this you correct me if uh, it is not the wedge you were talking about Mm, very hard because if we go from here for example we can join this movements here something like this in any case even we if we don't really have a breakout of the wedge this is obviously a clear opportunity to trade with a short position it is quite clear that the price is going down very very fast so even without considering this wedge or another potential wedge we have a clear opportunity to enter a short position here of course i'm not looking for any uh, long position here on the market I'm just waiting for the right opportunity to enter a short position and i think that this is the right opportunity to enter a short position um, okay, so this was pound against the US dollar. It is already um, 140, almost 140. So I need to speed up because uh, I don't really want to miss <laughs> the second part of my trading session. Uh, so uh, I'm not planning to stay longer with this live streaming. But now that I got the right connection to do that, I think I can stay uh, more days with you. So I'm going to plan the next uh, live trading uh, session for the next week, probably even more than one and uh, I I'm also planning to share my invested password so so many weeks so many things going on even the new course by the end of the month probably a second course by the beginning of the new month so so many things going on and uh, I'm really really uh, full of energy in this period and uh, I want to try to do everything but of course I also need to take care of my trading so I'm sorry if I can't really stay longer with you but um, uh, trading is for me uh, the priority and uh, uh, and so I really need to take care of my business and uh, I wanted to spend a couple of words about uh, mm, the Ichimoku combined with the ARM system and uh, I think that uh, the currency pair that uh, the trader in the group this morning was analyzing it is uh, Vincenzo and that is also in the chat I think um, is uh, is here so I think that it was pound against uh, uh, Japanese yen that he was analyzing so we can analyze that one but before that I just uh, see the message uh, sorry wedge from 8th to 16th okay so it was a longer wedge okay so let me go back to pound against uh, um, US dollar okay here and uh, so from the 8th okay to the 16th, 8th, 8th here. Oh, okay, so probably not with a downtrend line. You mean with an uptrend line here? Something like this? Um, not really sure about it. Uh, but this will not be a wedge. This will be a pennant. Not really sure about it, but um, I agree with you. This uptrend line. I was analyzing this in my previous uh, in my previous video analysis. I think last week or maybe at the beginning of this week. This is 16th of April. Yeah, I think I was analyzing this uh, uptrend line without considering the downtrend line in the video. Uh, so. Uh, not really sure if you mean this one this this time I'm going to wait for your answer in the chat before switching to the other one um, But yeah, clearly so many uh, good key levels that we could trade for this week uh, on pound against the US dollar but one thing that 
is in common with all these key levels that uh, we are analyzing is that all of them uh, are um, um, with all of them we would like to trade with a short position and not with a long position so even this uptrend line even this potential um, pennant that we have even the wedge we were analyzing before here a potential wedge even the wedge that probably um, Oh yeah, so he confirms that it was this one. So we had many chart patterns, many key levels that we could trade. I'm glad that uh, at least I took this one because this looks very, very nice to me. And uh, okay, let me go back to pound against uh, a Japanese yen and talk a bit about the combination of the ALM system and uh, the Ichimoku. It is something that I'm really, really researching a lot about it. And uh, you will see all the huge work that uh, I have uh, done and I'm still doing in the next course, not next course, but next next course that I'm launching, probably at the beginning of May. I'm really working a lot about it. I can't promise anything, but I'm really researching a lot about it. And uh, let's go with the ALM50. So let's create ranges of 50 pips here, uh, because I think it was the one that the trader was, uh, um, was analyzing this morning and uh, so something like this okay and uh, like this and um, let me add the Ichimoku okay so let me go a bit back um, probably let me see how long back <laughs> uh, I think that's too many positions if we start from here let me start from uh, here for example so something like here okay uh, so let me start with Ichimoku plus the ALM system here. Um, I'm, I know it might look a bit a mess, so I'm going to zoom uh, in. Um, and so let me also adjust the Ichimoku. So I want to have only the clouds here. Okay, lead one is okay. Um, let me have only the cloud because the first uh, um, the first research that I have done is combining the Ichimoku uh, cloud, so only the cloud with the ALM50, with the ALM system in general. So very, very easy. You have the same strategy that you have with the ALM50, so if the price is going from here to here, you open a short position. But this time we have a filter on the market. So we open buy position and long position uh, no long position and short positions according to the arm system only if we also have the price below the cloud for a short position and the price above the cloud of the Ichimoku for long position. So from here to here we uh, need to open a short position here with the ARM system. We check do we have the price below the cloud to open a short position? Yes we do. The price is below the cloud so here we open a short position on the market. So this is the first research and probably the easiest one to do with the Ichimoku. I have already completed it and uh, is a success it really gives very good results and uh, this is only the first one I can tell you that I have done about 25 or 26 something like even study maybe if the if we need to open a position here maybe instead of having a first hypothetical take profit of 50 pips and uh, a stop loss of 50 pips with a risk to reward ratio of 1 to 1 maybe we can wait for a retracement of 10 pips and then open our short position something like it happened here we had a retracement of even more than 10 pips retracement of 10 pips we can open our short position here and stop loss here and take profit here and you will be amazed by the results of something like this of course sometimes you miss some very good trades but when you have the trade on the market with something like this you can see that when you save 10 pips on the market, it's not really that you are saving 10 pips, it's like saving 20 pips because you have a stop loss that is 50 pips here. If you save 10 pips, the stop loss goes from 50 to 40 pips. But it's not just like that because usually you have a take profit that is 50 pips but right now you have with a discount of 10 pips you have a take profit that goes from 50 to 60 pips so you have a stop loss of 40 pips take profit of 60 pips 
with just 10 pips of discount, your risk to reward ratio passes from 1 to 1 to 1 to 1.5. So it's a huge difference in terms of final results that you have on the market. And of course, I will share everything with you in uh, in the Udemy course that I'm going to launch in May. So I don't really want to talk about it now, but I wanted to analyze the normal um, Ichimoku Plus uh, ARM system uh, that uh, we were talking about about this morning in the Facebook group with the potential trade that Vincenzo had on the market. And um, so uh, Asif says in the chat, markets open Friday, it's long weekend. Uh, well, markets is open till Friday, yeah, the Forex markets, uh, at least with the time that I have in Italy and in London until Friday evening and it reopens on Sunday evening and uh, so it's usually almost like that, uh, every time like that. Um, and. Um, and so I was talking about Ichimoku plus the ARM system. So we should have, considering uh, that we start from here, um, first thing that I want to say is that I'm trading with the normal, um, the normal ARM50, and I can say that uh, this week has not been the best week for the ARM system, the ARM50, because you can see if we zoom out, you can see that uh, here the price is almost in a kind of range for pound against Japanese yen, and uh, you know that ranges are what kill the ARM system. You always, we always want to see strong trends when we uh, trade with the arm system we never want to see ranges so i already tell you that with the normal arm system we are slightly in a, a, a bad period because the price is ranging here and uh, you can see that even if we zoom out uh, this action that we have here is very very weak compared to other actions that we had on the market for example this one in january was one of the best periods for the arm system then we we had another very good period with this uptrend then even this this good movements going down and up like this are okay but since we entered this phase from here from the 21st of March we don't really have a very good period with the arm 50 so far on the market so I'm uh, it, it, the, the system is not facing a very very good uh, period but let's check with the Ichimoku if the things change uh, and we have uh, a a better period compared to the normal system. So we were analyzing from here. Uh, so here we should open a short position on the market with stop loss here take profit here and let's see how it goes the price is going towards the take profit then is retracing Incoming and mail. it is going here oh i received a message on the meta trader <laughs> okay anyway it is going back here so it hits the stop loss here so remember we have so far one loss zero wins and uh, here we with the normal arm system we're supposed to open a long position but with the combination of ARM system and the Ichimoku, we need to ask ourselves, is the price above the cloud to open a long position? No, the price is not above the cloud. We, we are not allowed to open a long position here. So here we don't have any position on the market. And it is a, a very good call because the price goes all the way back and here it would have it our stop loss if we would have traded with the normal ARM50, but we didn't have have any position so we saved one position here now here we should open a short position be, um, be with the arm system because the price is passing from this level to this one but once again let's ask ourselves is the price below the cloud yes it is below the cloud we are allowed to open a short position so we open our short position with a take profit here that goes very very well we have this take profit in just three hours of trading so very nice position on the market so remember this we have one loss one win position on the market here of course we have a continuation of our short position with the stop loss here and the take profit here it is going very close to the take profit here it retraces once again it goes very close to the take profit we can't really do anything about it because then the price retraces and uh, here with this huge candle probably due to a news the price hits the stop loss uh, here 
and so we have two losses one win here we should open a long position but the price is still in the cloud it's not above the cloud so we don't open any position and it is very good call once again because the price in one candle just hits the hypothetical stop loss that we would have had here so we still have two losses one win if i remember well so here we should open a short position we are below the cloud so we open a short position we hit the take profit here so so far we have two losses two wins now here we have another short position with the arm system price is going down then it retraces all the way here and hits the stop loss here so three losses two wins right now let me type it here because uh, maybe i can forget about it <laughs> so we are two to three uh, regarding the what we are analyzing so far so two wins three losses here we should open a long position but the price is not above the cloud uh, it's actually below the cloud so we don't open any position here and the price retraces it goes here here we open a short position here because the price is also below the cloud and we lose this position here so we need to adjourn this one two to four so not a very good uh, period with the ALM system, even combined with the Ichimoku. We saved a couple of bad trades, uh, but still not a very good period. But um, when the price is uh, ranging or it is slowing down, of course the ALM system is not working at the best. We need to go through this period and wait for a better period when we have a strong trend on the market. So here we open a long position, let's go on and we hit the take profit here we hit so we have another winning position here i'm going to change this we have three winning positions and four losses on the market here we have another long positions because we are still above the cloud here so we hit another take profit here and of course here we have a continuation of the long position and we hit another take profit here so we we go to five winning positions against a four and we are here we continue with a long position but we have the stop loss that is hit here and we don't open any new position on the market because the ply the price is above the cloud so we are not allowed to open a short position so so far we have five wins and uh, five losses on the market let's go on the price is going up let me see if it hits yeah for 0 0.2 pips it hits this level so we open a long position because here we should open a long position with the arm 50 and we are also above the cloud so we open a position here let me drag this here we open a long position here and it goes um, in a bad way because uh, we have the stop loss on this level and the price goes to this level so we need to change this with five wins and six losses here we don't open any short position on it because the price is in the cloud or slightly above the cloud so we're not allowed to open any short position the price goes down and here we need to open a short position we are also below the cloud so we open a short position here let's see how it goes it goes all the way down here where we open a new short position and we adjourn this six to six so considering that this period from the 22nd more or less of march is not a very good period for the arm system because the price is just ranging considering that we we break even with this strategy combining the arm 50 with the ichimoku i think it's good news i think and uh, i already know that it's a good news because i have tested this since 2013 and the results are quite good so i, I know that this is a valid strategy that we can apply on the market so, so considering that with the um, the normal um, um 50 we are um, something like a six uh, to nine or six to ten something like that so we are not in profit and with this we break even this is good news and uh, and so uh, I I say again, this is a very valid uh, strategy that we can apply, but you will find so much more in the Udemy course that I'm going to launch in May. Uh, I'm still researching some other ideas that I have had regarding the combination of the ARM system and the Ichimoku trading. And uh, so 
it will be a huge work and still have to record everything so um, I better speed up about it and um, um, just uh, let me check the chat then I want to spend the last words about it and uh, probably we are going to end this live streaming um, if you don't mind me asking what lot size do you normally trade uh, I normally trade less than one lot for position I rarely go about one lot for position um, but um, I don't remember exactly I have some of the accounts uh, that are linked to um, to cashback forex uh, so they pay you for the amount that you generate of lots they pay you like the spread back and I think that uh, usually I trade uh, around I'm not really sure but like more than 100 lots per month for sure uh, not really sure about the exact amount I, I have to check but more than one month more than 100 lots per month and usually less than one lot per trade with my main account but um, it's not 100 lots per month only with one account combining all the accounts that I have <laughs> so um, so this is the answer and uh, wanted to spend just last a couple of words about this Ichimoku plus the arm system what is the logic of it the logic is that when you trade breakouts of the cloud we have seen the same problem before when we are we were analyzing with the uh, the Ichimoku and the problem about it is that many times when we want to trade it, uh, it is uh, easy to trade when we trade the rejections of the cloud. It is easy to trade uh, to set a take profit because we have the strategy called the measured move. Uh, and uh, you can find everything about it in the Udemy course. Uh, and uh, But it's not the same when we trade breakouts of the cloud because we, we don't have a significant previous movement in the same direction that we can study in order to have to set our take profits on the market so we usually study key levels to understand where to place the take profits now the logic of the arm system combined with the Ichimoku is that when we have breakouts of the cloud you already know where to place your take profits because take profit take profit and stop losses are placed uh, with the logic of the arm system so you don't need to study the market to set a stop loss to set the entry point and to set the the uh, take profit because it will be everything like the um, like the arm system so you already know where to enter the market and where to exit the market but you have a filter to uh, take only the best trades the best opportunities that you have on the market so this is mainly the logic of combining the two systems but there's so much more about it and uh, there are many things to say about it that I really can't really say them in five minutes during this live trading session. Um, then, um, is this the strategy that you are coding? Uh, no, this is not the strategy that I'm coding. I think that this is a little easier to code compared to the other one. The other one is very, very complicated. And I can tell you that it's like one month that I'm working with... Uh, uh, the uh, the developer of the uh, expert advisor and uh, we still haven't figured out how to uh, build it 100% accurately so uh, like uh, trading in, uh, in like trading manually because it's very very complicated uh, when you trade it manually it's not going to be complicated because uh, I have well, not me, but I have paid someone to build an app that you can use online, you can use offline, you can download on your desktop. So it will be very, very easy because the app will tell you exactly how much to invest and it will be everything clear. So it will not be very, very hard to trade manually. But regarding the EA, of course, you can't really insert the app in the EA. So it's a bit more complicated and it takes probably more time but it is not this strategy that I'm coding I, I believe that this one would be much easier to code uh, for an expert and uh, okay so that's pretty much it I think that I have talked for more than an, one hour and a half 
Uh, it says one hour six minutes, but I don't really believe it. <laughs> uh, I think that is is more than that. I think so. Um, uh, my my voice is also lowering, so I think it is a good time to end this live trading session. And uh, I will have the markets analysis with the review of the results for this week tomorrow. And uh, I, I'm pr I'm planning to launch other videos, uh, educational videos on Saturday and probably even on Sunday so we will have plenty of time to uh, enjoy the forex market together and uh, okay so that's pretty much it for today thank you very very much for joining I always appreciate you joining the live chat just to say hello and I appreciate your time and analyzing the market all together with your requests in the chat so that's it for today thank you once again for watching and I will see you very soon I will have another live streaming next week I will let you know here on YouTube thank you very much and see you soon